All right, guys, this is John Murphy. We had some technical difficulties. Sloan, my co-host, was on with me, and now I don't see her. And it's too bad because she had a great background of the Bay Area where she's supposed to be at. She's really in Hawaii. And so we're going to go going on our webinar. Thanks, guys, for your patience with this. Um, I'm just going to dive in now, and we're going to start this thing again so that you can see the presentation we have for today. And as you can see, the goal of today is to talk to you about six innovative mortgage strategies that you absolutely must know. And I want you to know we're going to move pretty fast here because some of these strategies by themselves are webinars in and of themselves. But there's a lot here. We've had a lot of uh, questions on these particular six. And I want you to hang into the end because the sixth one, you can see it was five. And the reason we added one in there is because of the market uh, volatility in terms of rates and prices both. And there's a strategy there that can help you out whether you're a seller or a buyer. So hang into the end, you'll see that one is number six. So let me start by who we are. Pacific One Mortgage is a branch of Bay Equity Home Loans. Bay is a mortgage bank based out of the Bay Area. Pacific One is in Washington and in Hawaii. We do conventional USDA, FHA, construction, and so on. And something we call soft money. That's for those of you that don't qualify for those other loans I just mentioned. Here's the legal thing that tells you guidelines, rates, programs change, and what we go over today may not be here tomorrow. So if you have a specific scenario that you'd like to talk about, reach out to the loan officer that invited you to this particular webinar. We're happy to talk to you at that time. The mission statement of the Ultimate Edge webinar series is to provide our clients with education, a path to knowledge, and the inspiration to take action. Because with the first two, it's great, but without action, nothing happens, right? And so the goal for today is to introduce you to the six borrowing strategies we're talking about and pass along that knowledge so that it's gonna help you understand your options so that you can prepare to take action when you're ready to do so. And in line with that, let's start by taking a look at the mortgage payment. So this is a, a graph of an amortization uh, table in essence, a 30 year amortization of a $250,000 loan. And it shows a couple of things very visually and very impactful. One is that you pay almost as much interest on this loan as you do principal over the life of the loan if you were to keep it for 30 years. Interest expense is a significant expense on a loan, on a mortgage loan. And it also shows you that the interest expense is higher on the front end of the loan than it is on the back end. So it wouldn't be nice to deal with that. And because the mortgage debt is in some cases, the single largest debt that many people have, managing your mortgage in such a way to reduce that cost or use it in some manner to raise wealth is what the goal of this presentation is all about. As you can see from the very first payment there that there's over $1,000 of interest that you pay on a $1,342 mortgage payment. And five years later, if you were to take a look at your payments that you made, you'll see you paid 65,800 and some dollars of interest and your principal reduction is only 14,000 and some odd dollars. So dealing with that would be a great thing and you wouldn't look like this guy who recognizes that when you're 15 years into a 30 year mortgage, you still owe 68% of the principal balance or a lot. And so he's kind of crazy about that. So mortgage strategy number one, we affectionately call this Misty's get out of debt fast mortgage strategy and that's after Misty Griffith, our Hawaii loan officer over there in Maui, actually, who develops, didn't develop strategy, presents a strategy, guys, and she's very passionate about this. The best borrow profile I would say for this is a borrower who's disciplined and needs flexibility in their mortgage pay down strategy. Now, we're not talking bi-weekly stuff here. We're talking a much more aggressive approach, as you will see. It starts with this particular one by understanding your cash flow. So that's step number one. Take a look at your net income that comes into your household um, on a monthly basis and take a look at all of the debts. We're talking living expenses and credit cards and, and going out to meals and paying gas and all of that and developing a budget that shows you how much cash surplus you have at the end of the month. Once you have that, you're going to couple it with a couple of items here. And here's, here's what shows you. Let's say that the person here had a $5,000 net income every month their monthly expenses for everything was $4,000 a month. They could live on that. So that allows them a cash surplus of $1,000 a month. So they're going to couple that with the two other components. So component number one is understanding your cash surplus that's available on a monthly basis. The second component is a line of credit. Now, this could be a home equity line of credit on your house, 
could be an unsecured line of credit, it could even be a credit card. The point is it's a line of credit that you can pay down and use and pay down. In this particular example, this, these clients have a line of credit of $10,000 and they're going to use $8,000 of that and they're going to apply it to their third component which is their mortgage. This mortgage is the 30 year mortgage, the $250,000 one we looked at. So if you do this, we're going to provide you with a little tool here and this is the, what it looks like from a distance. Let me show you a little closer vision of that. So you took the $8,000 from the line of credit and you placed it on your mortgage the very first month. So your balance was 250,000, but then because you made your first payment and you paid $8,000, it dropped to $241,699 the second month. You reduced that much principal and hence that much interest on that much principal. Then the next eight months, you're going to take $1,000, your discretionary income there, and apply it toward that line of credit and reduce it by $1,000 every month so on month 10, it is free and clear, the line of credit, and available to you to take and put another $8,000 on month 10 on your mortgage and drop the balance from what was 238 now to 230,000. Now I do wanna um, state here, there is an interest expense on the line of credit, but it is almost inconsequential when you compare with the interest you're saving on the loan that you're paying down. In this particular example, I did some calculations with a 6% rate, on a monthly basis, if you did this strategy, you'd pay about $180 that month for interest. So what it does is it takes on month 11 there, what would have been a $246,000 balance with your regular amortization and drops it to $230,000. The savings are tremendous on this. Um, and the results at the end of just 12 months of doing this are this, your principal reduction was 16,000 and some odd dollars as opposed to what it would have been 3,000 you have 26 years remaining term on the loan and the total interest that you save just because of doing that strategy for the first year over the rest of the 26 years, you're going to save 47,000 and some odd dollars in interest. It's very significant. So we talked about action, right? So the call to action in this particular one, number one thing you can do is you can reach out to the loan officer that sent you to this webinar here and get the, the what I call the loan data spreadsheet. And you're going to put in your own information in there, your mortgage, your interest rate, what it looks like, where you're at with that, and then determine how much available line of credit you might have. And you're going to plug in some numbers there. I don't know if you can see it here, but in this particular case, the person is using a $6,000 um, line of credit and applying that for the mortgage and then using $1,000 a month to pay that back. And then the seventh month later, they put another $6,000 on the mortgage. And what that's going to do is do a little amortization schedule and show you just how much interest you're going to save over time by doing that particular strategy. Missy's also written a little book. She's an author. That's kind of cool, isn't it? And it's free because Missy's passionate about this particular strategy and about just homeowners paying off their debt. And you can get that by reaching out to any of us and we'll send Missy's book to you. It goes into this in depth and it'll help you understand it better because I know I'm going fairly fast for quite an in-depth kind of strategy. Number two, there's another strategy that we like, which will allow you to pay off your loan a bunch faster than a normal strategy. And it's called the all-in-one loan. The best borrow profile for this particular loan are borrowers who have significant cash flow and they wanna pay down their mortgage fast, but they don't wanna change their budgeting. They, and this is, this is something that just happens normally. You don't have to have an active role in doing this like you did on the last strategy there. Here's how this works. The all-in-one loan is a home equity line of credit in first position on your home. Let me say that again. It's a home equity line of credit. It's in first position on your home. It replaces the current mortgage you have now. It has three key features. It applies all payments toward the loan principal first. So when you make a payment, which actually goes into your bank account because the line of credit is linked directly to the bank account, then that reduces the principal balance on the line of credit by the amount of deposit you put in your bank account and hence the interest expense which is computed daily at the end of the day nightly you can see in number two there is less than it would have been would have been prior to that deposit and you still have personal banking features and access to your bank account the bank account has atm cards checks online bill pay transfers and all like a regular bank account because that's what it is so you see what happens here is you're taking your income you're depositing that into your bank like you normally would because your bank account is linked with your financing which is the line of credit 
you're actually reducing the interest expense on that line of credit by the amount of the deposit and saving yourself basically the interest rate on the line of credit here it kind of shows a four percent rate because that's kind of normal for these lines of credit so why does this make sense it allows you to take your biggest resource in your life which is probably your ability to earn income and instead of depositing into a checking account and earning a little over zero percent or maybe zero percent instead you're going to deposit it basically into a checking account which is linked to your mortgage it's going to drop your mortgage balance by the amount of that deposit and basically save you the interest rate on the mortgage so you're kind of earning four percent in that respect on that deposit so you're applying your biggest resource income to the biggest cost you may have in life which is your mortgage let's take a look at this and it might help you see how it actually works this is a graph that's going to show deposits over three months, as you can see, and then withdrawals coming out, and then leftover money, and how this kind of works. So on the first month, you make a deposit at the beginning of the month. Because it goes into your bank, that's linked to your line of credit. It drops the balance on your line of credit by the amount of the deposit, and hence your interest expense drops. But you have to live. So you, you go out, you eat, you put gas in the car, you do all the living things, you maybe pay some bills. And because you're taking money out of your bank account when you're doing that, the balance on your line of credit increases over time. And you get to the middle of the month and you make another deposit. And this is assuming you get paid twice a month in this example. And it drops your line of credit again by the amount of the deposit. And then you have to live. So you pull money out of your bank account for the remainder part of the month. What that does is it reduces the interest expense on that line of credit by basically the amount you see in the shaded area there right and that's the amount that you're not paying interest on month number two comes along and you do the same thing and you can see as long as you're living within your budget and you have good cash flow this strategy works extraordinarily well for people that have good cash flow going to their bank account then your line of credit is not going to get up to the balance it was at the start of the month so at the beginning of the next month you're going to drop it even further you're going to live you're going to make the second deposit it's going to go up to the end of the month the third month comes along, you make the deposit, you live, expenses come out, you make the second deposit and so on. And you can see there over three months there that you basically save interest expense on the amount of the cumulative deposits going into your bank account. The company that has this loan, this is a patented mortgage, it's that clever. They had an independent analysis done in 2011 for people who had the all-in-one loan and had some very interesting stuff. And they showed that People who have the all-in-one loan allocated 3% more of their earnings toward retirement account savings than people who did not typically have the all-in-one loan. They allocated 17% more towards cash reserve accounts, so that's short-term cash accounts, which means savings and things of that nature. They avoid paying tens of thousands of dollars in mortgage interest. You can see that by the way the loan works. And they could potentially lower the loan's principal balance by up to 12% per year. That is huge on a mortgage kind of thing. And they still had the ability to take their home equity um, that was there with their line of credit and use it for unplanned expenses if some emergency were to happen. So once again, the all-in-one loan, it's, this is a 30-year line of credit as opposed to a normal line of credit, which is turned out there for 10 years on the line of credit, and then you have to pay it back on the remaining 20 years, and you don't have access to the line at that time. So it's different in that manner. And you get debit cards, and you have checks and online bill pay and all the things that a regular bank account has. And you also have a client liaison and customer here to talk to if you have any questions on your line of credit or on your bank account. A very significant strategy for paying things off. So what's the call to action here? I'm gonna suggest that you check this out with a little online simulator that's available. We can send it to you and you're going to put in your information, which is the estimated value of your home. You're gonna put in the loan balance you have available to pay off. You're gonna put in what your cash flow is. It's very, very um, detailed. It'll be as detailed as you want to be. You can put in your cash flow needs throughout the month and how it looks. And then you're gonna press go and it's gonna show you exactly what it could do for you. And you'll get a little amortization table printout like that upper left one you see there and show you that in this particular case the people drop their mortgage to a 12 year payoff instead of a much longer period. And if you don't want us to send us a link, there's the address for it, the web address as www.aio is all in one loan.net. And I encourage you to check that out. All right, let's switch this 180 degrees, strategy number three. And instead of paying off the loan, here's a strategy where you're gonna carry what Rick Edelman calls a big 
long mortgage. This is for borrowers who manage their money really well and they view their mortgage as a wealth building tool. Instead of paying it off, they're gonna use it to, and they're gonna take their cash and use it for other wealth building needs. The guy who proposes this is Rick Edelman. Rick is a chairman and co-founder of Edelman Financial Services. He's really quite well known more on the East Coast than on the West Coast, but he does have a personal finance talk show and he's written a number of books and the strategy that I'm gonna go over today with you came out of the book when he originally wrote back in 1999 called The New Rules of Money. So I adapted this straight out of the book. I did not change anything at all, guys. I just wanted you to see it appear from Rick. However, and you can see the numbers don't really reflect today's numbers so well, but the strategy works exactly the same and it works even better on larger mortgages. So here's a tale of two brothers. These two brothers are exactly alike in terms of they both earn $70,000 a year. They each have $40,000 in savings and they will each buy a $200,000 house. Brother A wants to pay off the mortgage as soon as he can. So he takes the tried and true strategy, which is getting a 15 year mortgage, which a lot of people do. And he puts down all of his money. So he gets the smallest mortgage amount he can. So he has $0 left. His monthly mortgage payment is the $1,275. Rick will tell you about, about the after tax cost of that. That's reflected in there. And then in addition, he takes $100 a month and he puts it on top of his mortgage payment because he wants to eliminate his mortgage as fast as he possibly can. Brother B says, no, I'm gonna take a different approach. And he gets a 30 year interest only loan, which were available a lot back then. I know they got a bad rap, but then when managed properly, interest only loans can be a great wealth building tool. And they're, to some degree, they're available now. But even with a 30 year amortized mortgage in comparison here, the strategy still works very similar to this. So Brother B puts a much smaller down payment down, 10,000, which means he has $30,000 remaining. He invests that into an account. His payment is less. His monthly um, net tax benefit um, is there. And he adds another $100 a month to his investments, just like Brother A but he also has $496 more a month that he doesn't apply to his mortgage that Brother A doesn't have, and he applies it instead to an account. In this particular case, he gets an 8% rate of return. I know you'd love to see that return these days, wouldn't you guys? So who made the right decision? Well, after five years, Brother A has 11,000 and some dollars in tax savings, Brother B has 18,000, because remember he has an interest only loan, so much more tax savings there. Um, he also made more payment to keep in mind, all right? Uh, excuse me, interest only less payment to keep in mind. Brother A has zero dollars in savings. Brother B has $88,000 built up in his investment programs. And so what happens if suddenly both brothers lose their jobs? Brother A's got a problem. He doesn't have any savings. He doesn't have any income now. He can't get a loan, even though he's got significant equity in his home, 87,000. So he could potentially be faced with selling his home or facing foreclosure if he can't come up with another solution. Brother B has 88,000 sitting to the side. He doesn't need a loan. He can easily make his mortgage payment for years if he wanted to because then he recognizes that cash is king. Let's say they didn't lose their job. What are the results after 30 years? So 30 years later, Brother A paid off his mortgage a long time ago, right? He had a 15 year and he's putting excess payments on it. He's got $19,000 in tax savings over that period of time, but he took the same amount of cash flow and after he paid off his mortgage, he started putting it into his savings and investments. And he now has $567,000 and some built up in his savings, not bad. And he owns his home outright. Brother B has $87,000 of tax savings. And those are real savings, guys. That is significant to know, okay? And because he started earlier in his savings and investments, he's got $1.2 million in savings. And after 30 years, because he had a 30-year loan, he also owns his home outright. So the point of this from Rick's perspective, that cash is king. And for some borrowers, this strategy could make really good sense in building wealth, as you can see. Equity in the home is not the same as cash. If you want more reasons to carry a big, long mortgage, I wanna let you know Rick Edelman has a video on YouTube called 10 Reasons to Carry a Big Long Mortgage. You can go check it out on YouTube and see what he has to say about that. So your call to action here, guys, is to explore and understand your options. This strategy is not for everybody, but I want to emphasize none of these strategies we're talking about are for everybody, and that's our point here. Your situation may be different than somebody else. So if you like this situation, then do some research, determine your profile, whether you're a saver, whether you can sleep at night with an interest-only loan or not, that kind of thing, whether you're an investor versus a spender, 
and how you feel about the strategy. I mean, it has to fit your personality profile. And then determine your financial goals and talk with a certified financial planner about where you, else you might put your money so you can see what other options are available there. All right, I'm gonna bring this down from three rather large strategies down to earth here a little closer and some very potentially meaningful strategies that can impact you right now. So let's take a look at option number four, strategy number four, which is low down payment options for loans that need mortgage insurance. And in particular here, we're gonna take a look at someone who gets conventional financing and only puts 5% to 10% down on the home. Now, there are a number of low down payment options, including government loans that have FHA, VA, USDA, and so on. They all have some component that is basically mortgage insurance because they're considered riskier loans and you have the, 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 you get the ability <laughs> to pay for the mortgage insurance for getting that loan. And that ensures the loan for the lender and that's why they're willing to do loans with low down payments, right? Conventional has the same kind of options. It has a monthly MI option, which is what majority of people do because that's all they are presented with. And so we're gonna take a look at that. So that's just when you have a monthly portion of your payments allocated to the mortgage insurance cost for that loan. You could also do something called split MI, where you have an upfront portion, which is a large chunk for the mortgage insurance, which is added to your loan. So you're basically financing in that portion into your loan. And then you also have a monthly portion, but it's much smaller than if you had just the monthly MI. That's basically what FHA loans do. You could do all upfront if you chose to do so and you qualified for the loan program. And that's very similar to what a VA loan does. They have an upfront fee, which is larger. You can do the same thing with a conventional loan. You could also elect in conventional to do what's called lender paid mortgage insurance. In that case, the lender pays the MI for you, but they give you the higher interest rate to offset their cost of paying that. And you take a higher rate for the life of the loan. And then let me remind you, you could do a first, second mortgage combination. I'm not gonna talk about that today. It has its own costs and it may be right for you because it eliminates mortgage insurance entirely. And sometimes one of these are better than the other. That's the point. So let's just take a look at the mortgage insurance plans on conventional. There's a monthly MI, there's split MI, and then what I call larger split mortgage insurance, and then lender paid. The difference, guys, between the split MI and the larger split is you have your choice. You can take a smaller portion up front and split the MI, the upfront portion and the monthly portion, or you can take a larger portion up front, which will save you on the monthly portion of the MI. And the differences are noticeable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at these two because that's kind of where the largest savings are at, just to cut to the chase here. On the monthly mortgage insurance fund, you can see your payment there is 2709, whereas when you do the larger split MI, your payment is less by 78 bucks a month, a noticeable number. But it's really noticeable when you take a look over five years and many homes are gonna keep the mortgage insurance for at least that period of time. When you take a look at all of the costs associated with MI, including the upfront costs and all of that, you save over $5,000 a month, excuse me, over $5,000 total over that period of time when you can, on this particular comparison here. And I wanna stress that everybody's different and everybody's situation's different. So you may not save that much in yours, but it's worth taking a look at, as you can see, because it's very, very noticeable here. So again, call to action here, explore and understand your options. And that, in this particular case, that means you wanna talk to your loan officer and ask them the different options that are available and have them show you that. All right, which leads us to strategy number five, something we call an annual mortgage review. And this is for anybody who owns real estate or wants to own real estate, whether it's residential or your residence or rental properties, and you have mortgages and you kind of want to keep on top of your mortgages. You can see the theme of this whole presentation is staying on top of your mortgages, knowing the options that are available to you. And if you do that on an annual basis, you can probably save yourself money or build wealth, depending on how you look at this over time. So the concept of the annual mortgage review is you just want to keep track. And we say on an annual basis is, is good. So if we're not reaching out to you as we should be, then you should be reaching out to us. Your mortgage is probably the largest debt you're ever going to have. And so similar to your physical checkup with your doctor, we believe that you should take a look at your mortgage and your other finances and your goals there and check those out on, a month, on an annual basis so you know you're still on track for whatever those goals are. 
the typical annual mortgage review guys looks like this. It's anywhere from a 15 minute to a one hour conversation. It really depends on you. I really suggest it's face to face or I do video conferences with my clients when they're long distance. It's much better to see you than it is to do a phone kind of thing. It just doesn't work on these annual mortgage reviews. And it causes you basically to slow down from your busy life long enough to just slow down and look at your situation and your goals, check out your mortgage balance, check out rates where they may be, review a strategy. We'll oftentimes get inputs from your financial planner or a CPA. I wanna stress we're not tax advisors, we're not financial advisors. We just facilitate the conversation. We'll talk about rental real estate. I ask that question typically, and many people are interested in it. We'll talk about the pros and cons, whether it works for you. Maybe diversification is better. Put your funds in something else other than real estate. Maybe you want to upsize. Maybe you want to downsize. You can see the conversation really focuses on you and allows us to get connected again with you and kind of help you with that decision process. This is one example that we used um, in um, a mortgage review. This is a reinvestment strategy. And this particular strategy was actually a purchase scenario. Some people we had, they were buying a $500,000 home. They could put 50% down. They wanted to know if they should do so or a smaller down payment and what that did overall to their wealth building. So we looked at a 20% down with a $400,000 mortgage. We looked at a 50% down, both same rate on those mortgages. And then we took the funds that they had and their financial advisor had an account at a 4% yield and they saw what that did over time and whether their mortgage went down and the tax consequences and their liquidity buildup and all of that kind of stuff is what we talk about here, okay? So even though this was a purchase, it could easily be applicable to a refinance discussion as well. All right, call to action on that is simply to contact your loan officer if we haven't contacted you, our bad. Just check in. Um, it's a very simple conversation. Most of my clients are in a fine situation because we've had such good rates for a while now and they're fine. But it's good to know that and it's good for us to kind of check in with you. We're going to ask some thought provoking questions about where you're at and that's really, really healthy. Which brings us to strategy number six. And this is the one that I mentioned to you that's very applicable to today's environment. The question is, do you buy down the loan or do you buy down the rate? And I'm gonna show you what that means in just a second here. This best borrow profile is anybody who's purchasing real estate and the seller doesn't wanna lower their price. It's also a great strategy for a seller to recognize as well as you're gonna see in a minute, especially in a market where prices are kind of staying at maybe coming down, maybe not. It's kind of uncertain in some markets right now and rates are going up and you can see that. So the question is, do I buy now and what's the best way to do that? So here's the scenario we're gonna talk about. Let's say you have a house, it's priced at $435,000. The buyer, however, doesn't wanna pay that. They offer 420,000, so there's a $15,000 gap there. The seller refuses to take that offer. They go, no, I just gotta hang in here longer. I know I'm gonna get this house sold for that amount. I don't wanna budge. And the buyer doesn't budge either, they're stuck. But remember, when you take a look at a house, there, the total cost of this is composed of at least two things. One is the purchase price of the house, of course, and the other, as we saw from our very first slide, is the cost of the loan over time. And depending on the rate, the cost of the loan can be very, very significant. So if you could deal with the cost of the loan, you may not have to deal so much with the, with the price of the home. So here's the example on this particular one. So, the buyer wanted to buy the house for $420,000. The seller stuck at $435,000. With today's rates and paying close to no points or very, very low points, the buyer could get a rate around 5% right now. However, what we did here is we went to the seller and said, why don't you buy the rate down for the buyer? And I'm gonna show you what that costs the seller in just a minute here, okay? So the buyer could potentially buy the house for that price, but get a lower interest rate hence lower the cost of their loan. So the payment is gonna be lower, in this case, lower by 40 bucks a month. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you start adding it up, the interest expense on that loan over time, as we showed you from the very beginning, it really starts to add up. As a matter of fact, over 60 months, five years, this buyer, if they took option number two here, the higher price, but the lower cost loan, saves themselves over $6,000 compared to what buyer number one did if they hung in there and got the lower price, but accepted the higher rate. And over 15 years, it adds up even more. 
you can see that the total interest expense paid on the larger purchase loan, but the lower rate is 200,000 bucks as opposed to 217,000. It's almost $17,000 that buyer saved by taking a strategy with a higher price home, but a lower cost loan. And if you're the seller, here's what it looked like. The price reduction would have cost them $15,000. The co actual cost for the contribution for this particular scenario that the seller paid for was 8,000 and some odd dollars. So they kept 6,800 bucks in their pocket more than if they would have dropped their price and the buyer got what they wanted. So, and, and it's, it's notable that the seller got their price, which we all want to do when we're the seller. It's kind of a win-win. Seller got their purchase price and they netted more money than they would have otherwise. The buyer got their home, they saved more money over time than they would have otherwise. Truly a win-win. And if you would have just do the, done the analysis on the loan payment, in order to get that same payment on a loan, that's the purchase price they would have had to buy the house for, $410,580 with the 20% down, which is what this example was all about. All right, call to action there obviously is um, explore and understand your options, especially if you're in a situation right now that calls for this, guys when you're looking at doing a rate buy down versus a purchase price buy down and, and trying to understand where rates are at, rates change daily. You wanna look at your situation on, and when it's applicable for you at that time and see what the benefits are here. So the goal of our Ultimate Edge webinars is to give you education, a path to knowledge and inspiration to take action. And I invite you to take some action now. This gives you, I, I believe, some food for thought there are lots of options out there, more than I've been presented here. And as you can see, we went pretty fast over some pretty deep topics here. So I would invite you to explore them a little deeper and seek to understand your options. You can talk to any of these loan officers here. I suspect one of them probably invited you to this particular presentation. And you can also ask them questions or questions of me right now. I'm gonna stop this part of it and come back on the screen and take a look and see if we have some questions here. All right, let's take a look at the chat box. And good, I appreciate that. Thank you for that compliment. Lots of knowledge, lots of stuff. And you guys do all in one loan. Yes, we can do the all in one loan. That's available in Hawaii, by the way. We uh, This loan was on the market. The all in one loan has been a loan been out for a long time, guys. Um, and then they took it off the market basically in 2008. It came back on in a few years back on the mainland. And we've been offering in the Washington state for quite some time. It relatively recently became available in Hawaii. So you can do it over there as well. Other questions here? Yes, there are. Thank you for that. There are a lot of considerations and all these kinds of things. And really what this person is saying is you need to get together and talk and understand their situation better. And thank you for the compliment. That was, you know, there's a lot of information. I appreciate it. All right. I think that's it for now, guys. I appreciate your responses, all the people who attended the presentation. There will be a link for those of you who weren't able to make it today and we're going to have it available to you. Um, and I'm going to stop the recording now. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Those of you that did, we appreciate you being here. Thanks. Bye-bye.